Okay, so we've opened the hive, it's out of the foam box. Now in here, you can't see it, but all the eggs are underneath this bit of wax called involucum. That's something that the bees use for air conditioning. Now this hive, honestly, if I'd paid these bees to be better, you couldn't have got such a great result. These bees are just perfectly behaved. Now if you look here, you remember when I said you'll be able to see the pollen, see that crusty sort of yellow? Guess what that is? Pretty sure everyone's saying to themselves, pollen. See where you see it's open and you see glistening? Don't know if you can see the glistening here. That's honey. Genetically, this is the sort of hive you want. It's active, it's happy, and it's not attacking us. I mean, some hives, they just go crazy when you do things like that. They're up my nose, in my ear, trying to bite my eyelids. These ones are sort of saying, well, it's not my best day, but I'm not gonna do anything too radical. Just closing it up. Got a bit of spilt honey there that we don't want, so probably want just to wipe that away. So we're just going to go back here. Now this is what we call the first flush because uh, we're pretending we're harvesting olives. Now we're going to prick them again. So we're just going to, if it was ready, well it, it's always ready, but if it was like full, you would get a litre, at least a litre of honey out of it. So the bees are going to repair all of this. They're not going to be happy, let's face it. And I think that'll be the amount we harvest today. So we're just going to leave this for quite a while. Okay, I'm just going to tip this in too, just to get that honey off. Maybe we should move it. The heat can be a real problem for the bees. Once it gets to over 44 degrees, the hive can get so hot it can melt. So the bees actually are quite good at keeping the temperature down, but we know that if the internal temperature of a hive gets to the mid 40s, it's going to die. The wax they have starts melting so you've got to insulate them, especially with these extreme days now weather is weather and we've always had hot days but now we're starting to string two or three hot days in a week or within a month we might get a series of them and that's starting to be a little bit unusual these bees just cannot tolerate 44 degree days that's a death sentence what we can do to sort of eliminate the number of insects that move into gap between the foam and the wooden hive, we can seal the hive better. We're gonna make it insect proof. So what I'm gonna do, just put this on the table. I'm just gonna chock the hive, cause the hive's a little bit smaller than the box. I'm actually gonna put this foam behind it so it doesn't move around. I'm taping it because I want this hive to be as waterproof as possible. I don't want water to be able to get in. I don't want insects to be able to get in. And to that, I have some putty. If there's a gap between the wooden box and the foam box, the bees get into that gap and that can cause issues. The other issue, of course, is insects that you don't want. Spiders, cockroaches, they can get in. Uh, often I use a drill for this, but I'm just going to put a screwdriver in to make sure that the bees have egress into their hive. Because you can sort of imagine if the bees can't get in, that's not good. All of these bees that you're seeing flying in, they're all the field bees that have been out and about while we were doing the honey harvest. They've got one mission in life, back to the mothership. In this, I literally cannot see one dead bee. I think we've done pretty well. Let's have a go. joity has got a measuring cup here. Now this is really beautiful honey, it's hardly got any pollen in it. Pollen is brood food and I know some people like pollen in their honey mix, personally I don't. I mean when you think of the work the bees have put into collecting this honey, you really don't want to waste any. That is just fantastic, when you look at that honey, that's an amazing amount of work from those little bees. Half a litre, 500 ml of honey. The honey tastes like ambrosia. It's got a slight tartness to it, but it's very sweet. It's unusual, it's not like Apis honey, uh, feral honeybee honey. It's different, it's runnier, it's got more water content in it, so it means you can tip it on ice cream, for example, and it doesn't glunk up. Keep it in the fridge and it still stays runny. I hate my job.